Josie, very much for uh, the transatlantic economic integration plan. Well, and for that, too, we need to develop a common market, common standards. So this is indeed a very important agreement, and an agreement that also brings with it the Transatlantic Economic Council to be a permanent body with senior people on both sides of the Atlantic that will look at all those issues in a concrete manner in which way we can make it move forward. The BBC reported that the U.S. and E.U. had agreed on a single market. By announcing a new economic community integration, they were simply repeating what had been done in America and the EU on a larger scale. The accord states that the two blocs will aggressively push regulatory convergence in more than 35 areas, from financial services, intellectual property, military, education, mergers and acquisitions. They also agreed to jointly push a global carbon tax. We recognize that we have a problem with greenhouse gases. We agree there is a global threat, it's a serious threat. We agree there is the need to establish a limit to greenhouse gases. We need to discuss the possible pricing of uh, uh, CO2. Um, how can we translate this into a market economic compatible scheme? We have agreed to establish a high level group, a forum. This EU-US result is translated into the G8, uh, debated together with the average countries, China, um, South Africa, Brazil, among others, and India. A global solution to a global problem. If Bilderberg succeeds, America falls. All the victimized countries lose their sovereignty. Bilderberg is not a person, it's not an, uh, it's not an idea, it's an ideal, a very powerful group of people working together and from the positions of ultimate and absolute power, destroying every constitution on earth, we, no matter how powerful the constitution of the nation is, that's what these people do. The African Union arose out of the African economic community, shut up in the early 1980s. The African Union is financed by a consortium of international bodies, governments, and corporations. The African Union Army serves as an enforcement arm for the New World Order's exploitation of Africa. In Asia, APEC and ASEAN have announced plans to form the Asian Union, consisting of Asian and Pacific nations having more than three billion people within its borders. APEC will become the Asian Pacific Union and the world is to be divided into three great regions for the administrative convenience of the world government in which the UN is to evolve. As the unions form individually, they are simultaneously merged to form the first planetary government. They're trying to destroy every nation on earth which is trying to promote progress because these people basically they are landowners. Uh, they don't need progress because they control the land. If you take uh, the most powerful man in London, uh, the people who belong to the, uh, to the council and the committee of 300, who belong to the Billiburgers, you know, the British royalty, the Guelphs, the, the, you know, the black nobility of Venice and Genoa, these people, are their landowners. The new world order is the old world order. I mean, it's just the names have changed, the appearances have changed, but the concept hasn't changed. The idea is still to bring the men back, kicking and screaming back to the Middle Ages, post-industrial age world order. One of the things that is very shocking to most Americans is the fact that the United Nations Global Biodiversity Assessment, which came out in 1995, clearly shows that in order to protect planet Earth, we have to go back to a feudal system. They actually said that in the document. To craft a modern feudal society, the globalists are implementing a standardized North American Union ID card to track, trace, and control their serfs as they travel throughout the three regions of the NAU. Building on the massive displacement of humanity caused by globalization, the New World Order is rapidly constructing the physical infrastructure of the North American Union, the NAFTA Superhighway Control Grid. I'm Arthur Peterson, Colonel Retired in the Army. I see things today that are happening that would make my friend who died in World War II turn over in their grave. To think that people would even consider confiscating land of farmers and ranchers and taking their homes away from them, to turn it over to a foreign company 
in Spain, which was controlled by Don Carlos, I understand, a notorious socialist, and they get the tolls on Texas land for 50 years. The proposed Trans-Texas Corridor would be a patchwork of superhighways and railroads stretching 4,000 miles from the border of Mexico, cutting through Texas to Oklahoma. A lease has been signed that would make Texas Highway 121 a toll road. A private Spanish company won the bid to build and collect the tolls for the next 50 years. These deals with private companies are being negotiated largely in secret. And many state lawmakers are worried taxpayers are being sold down the road. Critics say it's a threat to our national security. It's part of a plan for a North American integration being carried out by government and corporate elites without congressional or voter approval. We took to the air over central Texas to get a bird's eye view of the Trans-Texas Corridor, which is under construction and will form the heart of the Trans-NAFTA superhighway system. History repeats itself. 2,000 years ago, all roads led to Rome. Rome constructed and maintained more than 10,000 miles of roads throughout its empire. The roads were used to project Roman military power, to control commerce, and to bind the nations and peoples they ruled. Rome also demanded tribute. Roman subjects from Albion to Judea were forced to pay a tax to use the roads. The Romans would then use the tax to dominate their subjects. Today's superhighways are a powerful tool in the globalist arsenal. They are instrumental in tearing down national borders and merging nation-states into larger confederations. Foreign governments and corporations are predatorily seizing infrastructure across North America. But nowhere has their attack been greater than in Texas. Texas is the front line. Over 8,000 miles of existing roads and land are being handed over to government-backed foreign companies. Foreign companies buy the legislators, who then turn over complete control to the same foreigners who finance their campaigns. Government power is then illegally transferred to unelected quasi-governmental regional boards that circumvent local governments and the will of the people. The next stage of this world government plan is to have a transportation control, and that is called the NAFTA Superhighway, or in Texas called the Trans-Texas Corridor. It confiscates 584,000 acres of land to be transferred into a control of a Spanish company which will collect tolls in Texas for the next 50 years, and there's no limit in the amount of tolls that can be collected. More than 80 federal and state highways have been designated as international arteries. The I-35 NAFTA corridor starts deep inside Mexico and travels through the middle of the United States and ends in central Canada. Container ships from Asia dump their cargo on the Pacific side of Mexico. It then travels duty-free by rail to the new Kansas City inland port, now considered sovereign soil of Mexico, in the heart of the United States. Under international agreements, predominantly foreign companies are placing tolls on already existing paid-for roads. Federal, state, and corporate documents show that they will then use the revenue raised to build up the transportation infrastructure of Mexico, not the United States or Canada so foreign-made products can pour in even faster from Mexico. Revenues raised will also be used to fund the fledgling North American Union and its growing bureaucracy. Bottom line, they're using our own money to enslave us. First of all, they're proposing a North American tribunal, which would be similar to what we have in Chapter 11 of the NAFTA agreement, which is trumped by international law. The U.S. Supreme Court and our Constitution could potentially be rendered invalid, and what we would have is new North American business law that would trump what we have here in the United States. What is also interesting to note that the NAFTA headquarters is in Mexico and controls the United States trade 